Hello. In this video, I will show a demo of Key Wrangler for Houdini, which is a tool I developed to help me with character animation on my short films. It is a tool that helps with setting keyframes in the animation editor. And I will use a simple example here in order to show all of its functions. So the Key Wrangler works as a Python panel, and we can enable it here, new paint tab type, and open a new Key, key Wrangler panel. If it's not available here in this menu, we just have to enable it in the Python panel and go into the Edit Paint tab menu and just move it here from the available interfaces to Paint tab menu entries. And we can also enable it in the Python panel toolbar the same way, just go into toolbar menu and move it from available interfaces to toolbar menu entries. The tool works for most of its functions on keyframe selection uh, in the animation editor. And if there are multiple animation editors open, it will work on the one it finds first. And here we have a shot from one of my animations and the character already has all the keys set. So it will be easier to see how everything works on an actual shot. The tool is divided into four sections. The first one is for keyframe operations based on the animation editor keyframe selection. The second one is for copying previous and next keyframe values. The third one is for moving keys in the play bar. And the fourth one is for resetting parameters to their default values. Now let me select here the arm controls. And I'm gonna just isolate this one, this curve. And here we have two options for in-betweening and the first one is a weighted or relative option so if i move left and right we see the keyframe is is taking value from the previous or the next key and this is a relative value um, meaning that it takes into account how close the keyframe is to the previous or next keyframe so a value of 0.5 or the middle value will try to mimic a linear transition. However, if I choose the in-between percentage option, this will be an absolute value. This means that it is not taking into account whether the keyframe is closer to the previous or the next keyframe, uh, but rather it just takes into account the absolute values of keyframes. So let's move this back and for instance move it here and now if you pre press the R button which is the reset button it will reset it to the previous value and if you press the S button it will, it will store this new value if you want to still work on it and reset it uh, later so R it will reset it to this uh, stored value. Now, um, whenever we change the keyframe selection, these values are automatically uh, stored. So uh, this is only, the, this S store button is only uh, used when we don't want to change the keyframe selection or work on other keys, but want to continue working, but store the current value to which the reset uh, will return the keyframe values to. So now if we move on and for instance, let's look at the overshoot here. Um, the overshoot, and I'm gonna move this key here so it's flat. The overshoot basically extends the curve uh, so that the, the character or the curve continues a bit further, so it extends. So if I now look here at the wrist, it, we extend the current uh, curve. So we extend the value progression from the uh, previous key, which is this one, to this one, and this one just extends this a bit further. Now, if I hold down, and this is for multiple operations here, right now, it's this change is a bit too much, but if I hold on Shift, you get a fine detail operation here, so you work on the details, and if I press down control, it will make it really broad. So this is just something if the values are 
not in a good range, we can press Shift for smaller fine tuning and Control while dragging for uh, larger uh, value changes here. Now, the next one is the anticipation, and this one basically moves the pose in the opposite direction before moving in the other direction. So here goes up and anticipation. I'm going to reset this. So move this one here, for instance. Anticipation will go in the opposite direction. So this is if the, you want the pose when the character first moves in the other direction bef before moving in uh, the intended direction. Now let's move on to is in and out operations. And I'm going to go to rotate X. And I'm going to add a few keyframes. Make it something like this. And the is in and out operations work on selected keyframes and take into account the previous key, which is unselected, and the next key, which is unselected. So if I now move the slider left and right, we see we get is in or out type of curve. Now, there's also is in or out blend, and this blends between the current curve and the is in or out curve. Then there is is in and out, and this creates an is in and out curve. And there's also the blend operation, which blends again between the current curve and the is in and out curve. And these are the is in and out operations. The next one is pull and push. And the way it works, it pushes towards the straight line or pulls towards the straight line between the previous key and the next key or pushes away from it. So if this is straight line, stood, it, the values are pulled towards this value or away from it. And this is, this is pull and push. Then there is scale neighbor left, and this one will scale all the keyframes towards the previous unselected keys. So their values will be scaled towards or away from it. And scale neighbor right, the same way, but towards this next keyframe that's not selected. So it is scaled towards the next keyframe. And then there's time offset. And this one is used uh, when we wish to, mostly when creating an overlapping action, uh, when we don't want, for instance, to move uh, the keyframes left and right to offset the timing, and instead want to keep the keyframes at the current frame, but mimic the behavior as if they were moved left and right. And let me just show you here. And this one requires to have a bit more keyframes created uh, to get the best effect. It's not necessary, however, uh, it, it, will be, it will create a more detailed curve in the end. So let me show you here, for instance, let's use these keyframes. And notice that the keyframes are not moving in the, in the timeline left and right, but only their changing value to sort of mimic as if you are moving them left and right in time. Okay, and that is time offset. And wave is used to, I'm gonna add a bit more keys. So wave takes the current curve and applies a wave type of curve on it. So this is useful when you want to have this kind of up and down motion, but want to keep the sort of the general uh, slope of the curve. 
And these are the key operations. And then you have the copy section, and this basically copies the previous and next key values. So I'm gonna just show it like here. And if I copy the previous key values, it, it will copy these values to these keys. And we, for next one, it copies the next keyframe values. So this is useful when we quickly want to copy previous or next keyframe values. The play bar move works on keyframes shown here in the play bar. So we don't have to have any kind of selection here as it will work on this keyframe shown here. So I can move the keyframe a frame or two or four forward, or again, one, two and four frames backward. And this one is useful when blocking the character poses and we want to just work on the timing instead of the curve shape, for instance. And the last section here is reset parameters to default values. And there are two options to reset only scope or all parameters of selected objects. So if I isolate only this rotate X of the elbow and click on the reset scope parameters, it will reset only uh, this rotate X. However, if I click on reset selected objects, because I have the shoulder and elbow selected, it will reset all the parameters of these two controls. And this was the overview of the Key Wrangler tool.